5, allí está el disparo, gol, gol, Dybala. He's been called all sorts of things, the next Messi, the new Sergio Aguero, football's next megastar, or simply La Joya. But there must be more to Paulo Dybala than just a bag of nicknames and comparisons. Hey, I'm Adrian from Abona TV, and today we'll be looking at the life and career of Paulo Dybala, where all these nicknames came from, and how all the hype surrounding this Argentinian attacker came to be. Now, before we get started, we also have an entire playlist of player profiles that you may be interested in, as well as a manager profile on Julian Nagelsmann, so be sure to check those out as well. But enough of that, let's get this profile on Paulo started by rolling back the years to his abuelo. Paulo Dybala's grandfather left Poland after the war and went to Argentina as there were many Europeans emigrating there. Poles, Germans, Italians, Ukrainians, etc. All heading to the Americas due to labor demand and economic opportunity. Paulo's grandfather had no connections in Argentina and spent two weeks sleeping in a cornfield with no food. But eventually things turned around for him, he met his wife, and had a son named Adolfo, aka Paulo's father. Adolfo and Alicia Dybala had three sons, Mariano, Gustavo, and the youngest, Paulo, born in 1993 in Laguna Larga, Cordoba, Argentina. Adolfo always wanted one of his boys to become a professional football player, and Alicia says that the first time Paulo began kicking a ball around when he was just four years old, he stood out from the rest of the boys. And his father must have seen it as well, as he always said from day one that he was sure that Paulo had what it took to become an elite player. So at the age of 10, Paulo signed on with Instituto Cordoba's youth team, where he would later make his senior debut in the Primera B Nacional in 2011. But more on that later. Tragically, Adolfo would never get to see the later stages of Paulo's journey to becoming a professional football player as he passed away due to cancer when Paulo was 15. Tragic as it may be, a silver lining, according to Paulo, is that his passing is what forced him to mature and drove him to go pro. Now here's something that could have unexpectedly yet directly affected Dybala catching the eye of various European clubs. In 2011, River Plate had a disastrous season, which saw them fighting to avoid relegation on the final day of the season. In order to stay up, they had to defeat Belgrano de Cordoba by two clear goals. Tied 1-1, River Plate player Mariano Pavon missed a penalty, almost surely sealing River Plate's fate and being relegated. This was a huge deal in Argentina, of course. Riots ensued because what's football without a little rioting? But there was also a shift in focus in that the Primera B started to get way more coverage on Argentine TV. And that's exactly where Paulo was playing. So at just 17 years old, Paulo made the most of the attention that the league started to get. Across 38 consecutive matches, which, by the way, was a record for consecutive matches played, he scored a total of 17 goals, becoming the youngest player ever to score a goal in the Primera B, beating out Argentinian legend Mario Kempes' previous record. He also became the first ever player to score two hat tricks in a single Primera B season, and also smashed the record of scoring in four consecutive matches. Paulo scored in six. In doing so, he helped Instituto to third place, though they ultimately lost their promotion playoff against San Lorenzo. But his style and ability on the pitch ultimately earned him the nickname La Joya, or Diamond. With all of these goals at such a young age, and with the incredible ability to play at any position along the front line in a formation, Europe inevitably came calling. But it wasn't without controversy. As with many players, Paulo Dybala had some third-party ownership, which always makes things so fun for transfer negotiations. Gustavo Mascardi, who owned Dybala's third-party rights, sold his share and claimed that he was going to leave the championship at the end of the season. Of course, Instituto was pissed about this, and it actually did affect Paulo as well. During the last eight matches of the season, while the legal wrestling was going on, he didn't score a single goal. And the problems didn't stop there. Without getting too into it, basically, it was alleged that Gustavo Mascardi, who again sold Dybala, was involved in a money laundering ring with former Argentine president Nestor Kirchner. How'd they do it? buy players with laundered money, and then place them at Racing Club. Then came the issue of getting Paulo a European passport, which would negate the need for a visa or a work permit. Of course, with his Polish blood, Paulo tried to get a Polish passport, but in the end, it became far too tedious. But given that Paulo's maternal grandmother was from the province of Naples, it was way easier for him to get an Italian passport. Poland, Italy, and Argentina must have all been fighting for him to play for their respective national teams. Can you imagine a Polish starting lineup with Lewandowski and Dybala up front? Whew. Paulo headed over to Palermo in 2012 to the tune of 12 million euros. Quote, we've got Paulo Dybala, the new Sergio Aguero. 
said Palermo president Maurizio Zamperini. High praise, which in his first season he wasn't quite able to live up to, as he only scored three goals. His debut came against Lazio, and he scored his first and second goals for the club on November 11th, 2012 against Sampdoria. Okay, so maybe not Aguero numbers, but perhaps Palermo wasn't deserving to be in the Serie A as a whole. They were relegated. And his time in the Serie A B was relatively forgettable as well, playing in 30 matches and scoring 5 goals. However, Palermo secured promotion to the Serie A once again, and in his third season in Italy with Palermo, he scored 10 goals in the first half of the season. He finished 9th in scoring with 13 goals, and joint 1st in assists with 10. With Tevez on his way home to Boca Juniors, Juventus needed a new Argentinian striker. It seems like they always need to have one of those on hand these days. And so they turned to Dybala, paying 32 million euros plus 8 million in performance-based add-ons for the 21-year-old Argentinian attacker. Dybala managed to make an immediate impact on his career at Juventus. Donning the vacant number 21 jersey, formerly held by Andrea Perlo, Dybala scored in his first appearance for Juve, the 2015 Supercoppa Italiana, which was held in Shanghai against Lazio. He scored his first league goal for Juventus on August 30th, 2015 in a 2-1 loss to Roma. His rich scoring run continued though as he managed to provide 6 goals and 2 assists in his first 16 appearances. He averaged a goal every 151 minutes, which was actually better than Carlos Tevez and Alessandro Del Piero's ratios in their first seasons with Juventus. He went on to score his first ever Champions League goal in the knockout rounds against Bayern Munich, but was unfortunately injured for the second leg. In all, he ended his season with 23 goals from 46 appearances in all competitions. He created more chances for his team than any other player, beating out second place Paul Pogba by a whopping 20 chances created, and almost 30 more than third place Juan Cuadrado. In his second season, Dybala started off much more slowly than in his first. In fact, he didn't manage to score a goal until the 27th of September against Dinamo Zagreb. But in that following weekend, he managed to score his first Serie A goal of the season against Empoli. While perhaps he isn't flying quite as high as he was in his first season, Dybala has still proven that he has the skill set and footballing brain to become one of the world's most dominant attackers, showing prowess as a striker, tucked in behind Higuain, or even playing wide at times. Clearly, Juventus like what they see, as in April of 2017, they rewarded him with a contract renewal that runs until 2022. But if this Laguna Larga diamond continues to excel at this rate, it won't be long before the usual suspects come calling again. Thanks again for watching guys, and if you enjoyed this video, why not drop a like and check out our playlist of player and manager profiles. Get the lowdown on Mbappe, Griezmann, Deli Alli, Nagelsmann, etc. My name is Adrian, this is Rona TV, and I'll be seeing you later. Thank you.